and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 23, June, June, the 6th through the 12th, so June 12th, um, weekly wrap up. Let's get some house cleaning things out of the way. I'm going to tell you guys that for the buddy read this month, I know that it's only about two weeks for us to read this book, but it is a super quick book. You guys voted to read Edge of Glory by Megan Vernon. It is about a six hour audiobook. If you check with your library, it, they may have it on audiobook um, through Hoopla or it's inexpensive if you buy the book and get the audiobook from Audible from Amazon. It is a 264 page book and it is new adult. Thank you guys for choosing this. I will be reading the other two books as well this month. So um, I don't know if I will have them done by the time we have our meeting, which is going to be on June the 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Time, however you want to say it. We're in Daylight Savings, so it's uh, Eastern Daylight Time, but it'll be at 8 p.m. That's something else you guys decided on, so I hope you guys will join me so we can chat about Edge of Glory as well as um, any other bookish stuff that we might be talking about. Bring your wine, have a chat with me um, if you're in the right time zone to just kind of wind down and, you know, just chill out and start your weekend type thing. Um, and we'll, we'll have a good time. We'll have a good time. I will post the Zoom meeting link um, probably Thursday night, if not Friday morning, um, just so it doesn't get out and get uh, released and things like that. So uh, we can do that. Um, what was the other thing that has to do with that? Oh, if you don't read the book, that is fine too. Please still join me um, and just have a chat with me, you know? We can be book friends. We can talk about other things. Um, but that is when all that will be. I will put all that in the description box for us or in, yeah, in the description box for us and uh, everything like that. So we dropped off kiddo um, yesterday on Saturday on Loving Day and um, to <laughs> his, to dad's side of the family. So he's gone for a week and we are kidless um, in turn possibly my area may be changing. Um, I, well, not really area, just places where I film things like that. Um, we will be changing our spare bedroom into an office and my husband has gone all sorts of gung-ho on this. He is like all about it, all about it. Um, it's really funny that my son, he kind of procrastinates like me, sort of. I'm sort of a procrastinator, kind of. Um, but at the same time, he has the if he knows what he wants to do tendencies like my husband, then he wants to get them done like right then. Like he was packed for this week trip that he's doing or going to visit, what have you, um, without us uh, Friday afternoon. Like he got out of school on half a day and he went and packed his bag. He like had everything like all like to get, what time are we leaving? Oh, oh we're leaving at, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, we're going to be ready. And as soon as, that he was like, let's go. Let's go. I'm ready to go. Which car are we taking? Oh, we're taking yours. Okay. I'm gonna go put my stuff in the car. Uh, are we ready to go yet? Are we ready to go yet? Are we ready to go yet? So I mentioned that I wanted to make the spare bedroom into an office and the husband is like, oh, we're going to do it the kid week freak weekend, right? I'm like, okay, not a problem. Got all week to do it. Got like five days, five days or so to get this accomplished. And, um, last like Wednesday, he was like, yep, found my desk found my chair last night. He's like, yep, found a combo for my chair. And I'm like, oh, so you're just taking over the whole office idea. And he's like, yes, I am. I'm like, okay, yep. So then we drop off the kid yesterday. And he's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And this morning when I decided to sleep in, he slept in too, but he also went out inside and, you know, cut the grass and then relaxed in the pool a little bit. But then his pool noodle thing kind of broke one of the boys uh that was visiting last week one of them either the son or or maybe it was the weekend before that I think it was the weekend before that um that kiddo had a friend over and they played in the pool and things like that 
uh, broke or semi broke his floaty that he usually uses and he finished breaking it. <laughs> I'm so sad that I missed it, but you know, there's that. So let's get to the books that I read now that you're all caught up on me. Let's get to the books that I read last week. There were only four of them. Um, I do kind of blame the eye. It was a kind of rough week with the eye, but I did get through four books. Um, and it's three out of the five uh, Salvation Society books that I wanted to get to you. I still have two more to go to, but uh, it's all good. So let's get to this one. The first one was Loyalty by Heather Dergen. I think I'm saying that right. I'm placing this in contemporary. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it three Steam fans had this as an arc. It was released last week on Sunday. Um, it's part of the Salvation Society books. And this one deals with Lorelai and Keegan. And the reason I think I rated it so low is because they're really the connection to the Salvation Society was so minimal that it just felt like I wasn't, I was reading a story um that had nothing that had no like back connection or what have you um you do have a mention and uh Catherine and Jackson are included in the story so that is the connection for the society but eh, it wasn't really a Salvation Society book um the only real connection was that Lorelai is a PR specialist and Catherine if you've read this uh Salvation series you know that Catherine is a big time PR person and uh yeah that was that was sort of it's not even like she worked at Catherine's agency no 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 mm -mm. no no, uh, Lorelai knows of Catherine because Catherine's firm was supposed to take on Keegan, who is a rock star and a bad boy rock star at that, and uh, didn't have time to take him on. So when Catherine and Jackson end up going to one of uh, Keegan's band's concert, the band name is Loyalty, by the way, um, going to one of the concerts, she runs into Lorelai and that's how they, you know, start to conversate. And then the boys end up doing something special for Jackson. So it was like, eh, okay, you kind of just threw this in here just to throw it in here. It doesn't really connect. But um, I did enjoy the rock star kind of romance that went on with it. Um, but yeah, that that's how that went. That's how that one went. The next book that I finished was Desperation by... Uh, Ashley Cade. Place this in a romantic suspense. Uh, give this one three stars. Give it two point or no, two, two Steam fans. Wow. Um, read it as an arc released. It's part of the Salvation Society as well. And let me think. Oh, now I remember why I, why I wasn't a fan of this one. Okay. So we have Hannah. Hannah is um was abandoned not really abandoned but she was placed in the foster system when she was young after her mom got killed by a drunk driver and then the guy the foster home that she was in or group home that she was in was a bad place so she ran away and she found this guy named drake drake is a bad guy um he was good to her at first but then he started to put her put his hands on her and yeah yeah yeah, so uh, this book is riddled with uh, domestic violence. And um, then on top of that, we have the car that uh, Hannah ends up running into with Drake's truck, which she's not supposed to be driving. Um, she runs into another truck and it happens to be Drake's cousin, uh, Devin. And um, Devin is a Navy SEAL. And he uh, was injured. Was he injured? Let me think. Um, I don't think he was injured. But he was interviewing to be uh, part of Cool Security. So there's that connection right there, right? And that's pretty much it, except for the fact that um, Drake is a douche canoe. And he abuses and keeps Hannah... Um, captive and then Devin after the accident is lusting after her and they go about their business because Hannah is pregnant at the same time mm. yeah yeah so there's that whole quasi like cheating thing that goes on and then there's this little like suspenseful twist that's thrown in there I won't tell you what it is 
Um, but it was like, mm, I saw that coming. I totally saw that coming. I knew that as soon as, um, the, the author had Hannah thinking about the fact that Drake had all these crazy hours and that his family is pretty shady, even though they have a whole bunch of pool within the town, the little sleepy town that they live in. And I was just like, eh, eh, just kind of push through it. Just kind of push through it. And, um, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. We're just going to leave it at that. So you do get to see Mark, Charlie, Liam, I think. Yeah. Mark, Charlie and Liam within the story but yeah it's so it's it's it is what it is okay then we then i we i finished uh the surviving trace sorry thought i heard something outside the surviving trace which is surviving time number one by kalia reed and i am placing this i don't know how i should put it but um it is a time traveling historical romance. I think that's how we would put it. So, um, giving it four stars, give it two Steam fans. I read this as an audiobook from Hoopla. Woo! I got this recommendation, I think it was from Instagram or something like that. And uh, whoever put that aesthetic together that like pulled me in to do it, thank you very much. I love this story. And um, if you like, outlander if you like the world building of outlander of someone traveling from the from the future to the past and then you know dealing with the things that are happening in the past you're going to love this story um i did have to knock off a couple star or knock off a star because at some points there were some um info dumping that ended up happening as well as um, there were some uh, disconnected sort of moments. And it was like, mm. but why? Um, this does end on a cliffhanger, but for me, it wasn't as big of a cliffhanger because I knew it was a cliffhanger coming and it didn't feel like it was so overwhelming that um, like everyone was talking about. So I don't know, maybe knowing that there was a cliffhanger stopped it from being such a huge cliffhanger, but I was just like, okay I, I i get that i get why that happens yeah okay um and oh i didn't even tell you our character's name so we have um serena will and uh etni 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 i can't really remember how to pr pronounce his name but serena ends up time traveling back after she sees and is uh, intrigued by this photo because she is an art dealer. That's what it was. That's why I knocked it down because she's this like uh, antique kind of person really fascinated with history and wanting to know things and stuff like that. But there's a lot of things that end up happening to her when she's in the past that she's like, I didn't know that was going to happen. And it's like, but you're like all into this history. And I mean, I get that it was like, a locational history type thing but at the same time it was like mm, mm. you're this sassy sassy woman from the future and you're gonna go back to the past and you know you're in the past and you're gonna act like you are like you would in the future feministic and you know knowing that you you have rights in the future whereas in the past you don't and being a history person you should know that and you know when all that stuff kind of happens so for you to go back in time and then act an ass and act a fool especially with like the clothing and the attitude and just all of that I was just like that that really doesn't make very much sense so I think that's where the sort of leg up on the sort of Outlander series kind of gets because at times, you know, Claire knew that she had to, you know, what she had to do because of her time frame and time jump. Whereas this book, whoo, sorry, this book, she knew she was supposed to be this history person and she was just like, eh, uh, who cares that I know all these different historical things that should be happening or will happen in the future but I'm still going to be who I am from the future, if you understand what I mean. And she's engaged to this guy named Will, 
Um, and they're kind of on a rocky relationship. I didn't understand that one either really all that much. And then um, I did like the swoony moments and feeling of Serena and uh, Etsy uh, together. And I did enjoy that relationship. I'm rooting for that relationship. Um, and then the final book that I finished reading last week was Unaware. And that is by Kara Jane. This is part of the Salvation Society. Um, I'm placing this in Romantic Suspense. This is an Australian author. Give this one four stars. Give its three Steam fans read it as an arc. It released uh, during this last batch as well, last Saturday, last Sunday. And this one has the best has the has the best connection out of the the three out of the five uh, Salvation Society books that I've read so far. And that is because Arya, who is twenty three, this is an age gap romance, and we have Logan, who is the cousin of Liam. So we have Liam, we have Natalie. Uh, Liam is, or excuse me, Logan. Logan is getting out of the Navy. He was, he was a Navy SEAL and now he's going to do some work with Cole Security and Liam and Natalie show up and you have Mark and you have all the guys. And I was like, Mwah! yes, 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 yes. And this actually, if I have my timeline correct, because there is a character that shows up, this probably happens um, before... Uh, the last two books in the Salvation Society as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the author, Kara Jane, yeah, Kara Jane, she says in her author's note that she hadn't read the series before. And then when she did, she binged quite a few of them. And then she started writing, she got her acceptance letter into the society and started writing this book. And so that's sort of how it plays. Um, so she probably hadn't gotten to the point where one of the characters that she ends up mentioning in her book um, dies. It's a character we don't like. So if you know, you know. Uh, so there's that. Okay, on to what I am currently reading. I am currently reading... The Gig is Up by Tamara Whitlow. She is a independent author that I found over on TikTok. And I uh, just started this book and I'm looking forward to diving into it. Um, then I am starting the second book in the Surviving Time trilogy. And that is The Reigning and the Rule by Collier Reed. So looking forward to reading that. Um, I'm actually already into it and kind of kind of on the fence about it because of where we left off in the last book and then what we have now and what we're learning. It's just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this because book two and time travel, you can only guess things have changed. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, and like I said, the body read book for us this month is going to be Edge of Glory by Megan Vernon. I might try and uh, set something up with Megan for her to, you know, possibly join us or something like that. Let me know down in the comments if that is something you guys would be interested in, in talking to the author, um, kind of having a, you know, chit chat with her as well. Uh, with our meeting and things like that. Um, other than that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for your patronage and support every month. Um, I hope you guys are watching me over on TikTok because I'm dropping them videos like crazy as well, or those clips, those whatever they're called, the TikToks. The TikToks, man. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy that. So I will see you guys in the next video. And thank you guys for watching. You come with me.